Um, so uh, one of the big challenges that we had is we were really interested in making sure that everybody had access to the information that we were gathering and have been gathering for years. So um, a few months ago, we finally were able to release a completely open API so that the entire industry has a good source of data to build on top of. Um, and since then, we've had hundreds of people, um, whether it be researchers or app developers, be able to use our API to start to grow their business and get an idea of, of what the overarching structure of the cannabis industry looks like so that we can all build something a little bit better together. Um, I, I thought it was an insurmountable thing with how complicated uh, cannabis is and how many different products there really are out there and how many different people are involved with it. Um, but we were able to come together with a really successful structure and um, we have a lot of people who are really enjoying it. Uh, open APIs in this business are really important, and I think that's something that that we're really focused on at our company, Flow Hub. You know, we're we've we've built this kind of platform to power growers, enable growers to manage their cultivations better, and then we have our point of sale to help retailers uh, and enable retailers to manage their, um, their their retail environment better and gain better metrics. But on top of that, we have an open API that allows third parties to write apps on top of our platform. Our biggest challenge is adoption by our enterprise clients, by our vendors. Our biggest challenge is adoption by the consumers and the users and that's actually the biggest reason why we launched our company right here in San Francisco um, three out of four of our co-founders are New Yorkers and we came out here because we believed that not only would the user community adopt very quickly but we also believed that the vendors the retailers would too and that is the hardest part to keep their menus up to date to make sure that when the customers are actually ordering, what they're ordering is, is in stock. And some of the other software that's here, that's sitting here right now, is going to help enable that and enable that efficiency at the retailer level to make sure that they're always in stock with the product that, that their customers want and that we can always make the sale. And I think that's the most important thing. That's what our platform is all about, helping you and delivering more results. So if you've got product up there and you don't have it in stock, that's not a good customer experience. And for Green Rush, the most important challenge, the one that we'll always strive to overcome, is that we're a customer company, first and foremost. And so to be a customer company, we need to always make sure that our consumers, the people purchasing on our platform, always get what they want immediately, and there aren't any back and forths. And second of all, it's for our vendors. So we take a lot of time and we pride ourselves in the amount of time we spend with our vendors to get everything perfect for them once they're showcasing their products to the consumers. Is standardization the prize of the first mover in the category, you know, where, where you're the one that, that, that's creating the rules and the construct that people are going to... I think it's a prize for the whole industry. Once it's standardized, then there's not going to be three strains on our platform that have different names, but yet are really the same product. I, I think it's a, it's a goal for all of us in this room and at this table. How, how does one create a standard aside from something that might look good? <laughs> So um, we actually, one of the, the troubles in coming up with a really big open API is making sure that you can individually identify all the individual pieces of that API. And to do so, we came up with um, something called a universal cannabis product code. And within that code, it actually has the seed manufacturer who made the genetics, the strain itself, the product, and the producer, and the batch, all in one particular 25-digit string. And that unique identifier for everything in our system allows for people to be able to communicate with our system in really meaningful ways. And so coming up with a, a standardization thing I don't think is a prize to be won. It's just um, it's a way to uh, allow us to all be on the same page and move forward together. Um, because as we're transitioning from stoner stories, if you will, and, and you know, uh, word of mouth to needing actionable data, we need to be able to communicate effectively doing so. And so um, I don't think it's a prize that anybody's necessarily going to own. It's, it's going to be something that everybody's going to come up with and, and you know, prosper with. Right, and uh, you know we all have uh, B2B systems, and that's what this panel is all about. And we all, you know, solve different problems, but you know there's some overlap. But having the system be able to communicate with kind of some sort of standardization really does help everybody. So that way, um, you know, Green Rush is able to know if something's actually out of stock because they can communicate with uh, point of sale systems. You know, opening that up and kind of. Figuring that out across uh, the industry is very helpful, and I think uh, instead of everybody kind of just, well, this is mine, you know, and I don't want to share it, um, kind of having those conversations and figuring out how we can all work together, because, it, you know, the industry is still really young. It's still uh, early days. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to work together, and I think if 
you know, we're all successful, then the industry is more successful, and that's what we all want. Sure, yeah, so, so on, the, on the point of working together, I mean, you created your own UPC, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is probably fantastic, but how, are, how, how, how do we really drill into to a, a standard, you know, that multiple organizations can contribute mm -hmm. to? Well, I think that um, there's already good standards that have been set up by, you know, huge global organizations. Like when you, you need to go register a SKU, you have to go to one global organization in order to get that. And within that SKU, you have represented, you know, on the producer and product level um, what that SKU means. And so everybody who has a barcode scanner around the entire world can scan that and get information about that. So I think it's, it, it's on us to make sure that we look at what's been implemented in other industries to make sure that we're not building something that just kind of exists by itself in cannabis, but that we look towards what's been, what's been done in those in other industries and try to produce something similar. Um, the, the SKU was, was a huge, uh, huge thing that happened um, to us and our economy and allowed us to track things on levels that we'd never been able to before. And I don't think there's any reason for us to try and reinvent the wheel. We should, we should be inspired by all the different um, things that have come before us. So that's it. Yeah, uh, to keep on that, if that's OK, I think um, that's kind of what more and more people are expecting with software, you know, no matter what it is. You know, if you're building something specifically for cannabis, it shouldn't be any different than a service that exists in, in some other vertical that's, you know, has that good user experience that's really simple to use. Um, you know, it's really important to, to bake that in. And sometimes, you know, with systems, there's a lot of things that are out there that you can kind of uh, try and mold into cannabis in some ways, but sometimes that doesn't turn out, uh, you know, the, exactly the way you want it. And it's beneficial if you're looking at B2B platforms and opportunities to kind of uh, build a real purpose-built machine depending on the problem that you're trying to solve, right? I mean, sometimes it does work. There's something out there that you can kind of convert and mold into uh, something that would work in this industry. And there's value there because you save money, because stuff's already kind of pulled together. But being able to kind of do something, um, you know, not out of the box, something really custom, very purpose-built, with good uh, UX goes a long way. So we, we wrote 120,000 lines of code just for cannabis. Um, and and uh, definitely see a lot of our customers tell us all the time they hate the stuff that they're using right now. Um, they don't like the stuff that was brought in from other industries. Um, not only does it not serve exactly what they need well, but um, when you take software apart and you take little pieces of it and try to put it back together, you run into a lot of difficulties with that. Um, whether it's trying to just scale out the technology and actually make it so you can use the software on a daily basis and it's not crashing on you, um, or you know, you need to do something really specific for cannabis and make modifications really quickly. If you're using off-the-shelf stuff, that can take months, uh, sometimes even years. And um, so, you know, when it comes to when it comes to software, um, cannabis is unlike anything else that that this world has done in, in a lot of different ways. Whether it's the cultivation um, that goes all the way from clone to the consumption, um, or you know, it's the processing of it. I mean, it, if it was really so easy for other industries to just come in and do what we do, then we would already see them here. And, and the fact of the matter is they aren't here yet. And the stuff that they've tried to put into place, it, people are complaining about a lot. So um, it's important that um, some of the stuff is, is very suitable. You know, sales has Salesforce, that's great. But for cannabis people, um, they need cannabis software. And, and that goes into the user experience and, and making sure that multi-generational farmers can only press a few buttons and still be able to comply, um, that doesn't exist in, in the SAP, you know, big business oracle world. So um, there, there's a lot of need for really, really specific software in the cannabis industry. Yeah, uh, totally agree. Um, you know, we, we did all of ours custom as well um, for that very reason. And we see a lot of that. Uh, we're based in Seattle, so we see, you know, the adult use recreational market, and we've seen some examples of that a good one is point of sale companies that are coming into the space that don't do cannabis specific um, point of sale systems but uh, people are using them and a lot of people are switching off of them because they're kind of realizing that cannabis does have some very specific needs that aren't addressed yeah guys growth is good and technological advances is what this is really all about but do you fear or is there any ha apprehension that this progression can marginalize the mom and pops out there Absolutely. Don't, yeah, is it, isn't that a concern that you're feeding the beast and now big? I, I, I'd big like marijuana? to say I'd like to say absolutely not. No. These tools are so easily accessible, and the, the upfront costs are actually pretty small to get in. But the the level of efficiency that they provide is 
night and day. Yeah, uh, just to kind of agree with that sentiment, you know, we, we're really all about leveling the playing field and getting the kind of insights that, you know, the mom and pop uh, need that, that they really can't afford. You know, they can't afford to staff a data scientist to go out and monitor the market, right? So we have to kind of provide that for them in an easy to digest way that they can understand because they just don't have that kind of scale. So by building platforms like Headset, we're able to kind of better level the playing field and hopefully give them an advantage to survive. I mean, we want, you know, they're the foundation of this whole industry and we, we want everyone to succeed in this industry. So giving them the tools to do that is, you know, what we want to do. Dave, do you have a point? Um, I, I mean, so personally, I, I guess I don't feel that uh, necessarily trying to uh, get every single mom and pop on an app is really the way to go. Um, the cannabis industry is a, a worldwide industry that doesn't just exist, uh, you know, for investors or, or for, you know, super big businesses or trying to get big data. Um, there are uh, farmers in states like Nebraska and Oklahoma and Montana that have nothing to do with having cell phone service or, or making sure they track stuff. and so. I think it's. I think there is a danger to making sure that we, you know, we're very responsible to the worldwide cannabis industry, whether it's folks really big and small. And and I think there there is a danger that we do try to over app things and and provide way too much data on the top of things. And it, it does have the capability of squashing out um, some folks who have been working really really hard in this industry for for many more years than we have. See, I think it increases. I think it increases profit margin you know, at the end of the day for the small guys to have tools, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it increases profit margins for the small guys to have tools, though, and I think that's what we're talking about, is like making these tools, these powerful tools, accessible to that farmer who might not love technology. It's for everything. It's for everything. I mean, it's every business. It, and, and I mean, to, to that end, it, it is really, it, it, it's people that we're representing here. The cannabis industry is not just an industry. It's not a bunch of big businesses necessarily. These are individuals that have been doing this and fighting against this for a really, really long time. And I think that, that you know, to, to answer your question of whether there is a danger to it, I think absolutely there is a danger to it. And being aware of that and being ahead of that is a responsibility that we as technologists should take on headstrong and say, yes, we do want to make things really easy for people that want it to be there, but if they don't want it to be there, then, you know, they shouldn't really have to. That's the way I see it. A question for Green Rush. You mentioned you don't get paid unless you achieve results. So what's your revenue model? We take a transaction fee for every transaction that gets processed on our platform. And so until we actually deliver a delivery order for you, we don't get paid. We only get paid at the completion of that order. So it's a set transaction fee, or is it a percentage of the of the order, or how does that work? It's a percentage of the order. Hi, um, this is for all of you. Where do you see your company relative to the new MRSA laws in California? So we um, we're basically trying to pay really close attention to everything that's been going on in California. Um, AB two sixty six and and six forty three and um, there's a tremendous amount of changes that are occurring, particularly when it comes to licensure and um, making sure that there's some kind of accountability and some transparency as to what's going on in the space. So um, we're doing a lot right now to make sure that we can set up our customers for when that future comes and they will have to have some kind of accountability that it's not just accountability stuff that they get a lot of stuff out of it. So we're, we're staying on top of it and, and honestly, I don't think you can be in the cannabis space unless you're um, engaged at the political level now because as our the, the person who came up here before us, uh, whose name I don't recall, but I guess that's sort of a problem amongst us. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it was such a good speech too. Um, but uh, uh, one, of, one of the issues we have is that it's, it, the fight is not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. So we have to stay politically motivated and stay on top of what's going on. And so we, we're very, very well involved in taking, taking steps uh, towards it. Uh, I'm a big believer in regulation and taxation. I, I know that might be the antithesis to a lot of operators in the state of California, but 
that's the only way that our industry can really truly move forward and become a very big industry, but also an efficient industry that serves the customers the very best product. So from that end, uh, Green Rush is going to do everything possible to ensure that all of our vendors are properly licensed. Uh, we're going to go through a, uh, a due diligence process with everyone that we work with, and we're going to encourage our operators to actually go and get that licensure that they need to fully comply with California law. Yeah, and then we know we're at Flow Hub. We're actually already working with, uh, we have a little pilot program going out of here with four different cultivators, uh, some outdoor actually, who are using our platform right now to kind of get SOPs in place to get ready for when the regulatory system kind of comes into play here. So um, we're, we're just watching things and we're working with locals and we're, we're trying to make sure that we're, um, that we're available for people here so that when things do switch, uh, you know, there's a great system in place for that. So I heard you mention SAP. I used to work for SAP. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, has anybody uh, talked to SAP? Have you seen if they're developing any industry solution? A competent they are. Um, no, uh, the conversations that we've had, the, uh, there was no information about the fact that they were uh, interested in the space in, in terms of actually uh, pulling the trigger on it. Um, obviously, they're aware of the possibilities, at least at the time we spoke to them, but um, uh, they, they didn't have any intentions that I knew of of actually developing software at the time. Um, they're super big, though, so they could be working on something secret. I have no idea, but at least that's what they told us. So. Yeah, I think I think a key thing, though, going back to kind of the beginning of the panel, was just like I, I think you need to be in this business, though, to really understand the needs of the business. And I don't think they have uh, boots on the ground, frankly, at SAP. I don't think they have guys like working in grow facilities trying to figure out the most efficient ways to do things. So, uh, you know, that's where that's where people like us come in. That's where you know we all come in, right? And we're we're filling those voids, and and we'll be the big guys. And I think they'll come in and probably buy us out eventually and that's what will most likely happen if you're for sale yeah if, if you're for sale I love compost teas when it comes to outdoor growing actually I think it'd be super cool to build a program that actually was able to look at the how the teas were formed and get some more information about the efficacy of different teas that's, that's a, actually a super cool idea yeah it's a great idea <laughs> that's a really great idea actually all right, we've got to call it quits. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you.